Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for June 12th, 2022, occurred on 2 10 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including the potential for two tropical cyclones to be forming in the East Pacific Basin and what could be forming in the Atlantic Basin over the next several days, and a look at what to expect for the 2022 Atlantic hurricane season. Could it be a very historically active one? Well, let's go ahead and find out. Jumping straight into everything, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic and parts of the East Pacific this afternoon, we noticed that in the East Pacific, we have a large area of disorganized shower and thunderstorm activity stretching all the way over here, several hundred miles here. This area right here is Invest Area 92E that will likely go on to become a tropical storm or hurricane over the next five days. We have another disturbance back here, which could pose some land concern over the next several days as it drifts off towards the northwest here. And then an area of interest in the Atlantic Basin that could try to develop over the next five uh, to ten days as this generally moves towards the northwest and closes in on the Yucatan Peninsula. And then we could be watching the Atlantic subtropics out here for additional development from a complex of thunderstorms that will dive down over the uh, warmer waters here and that too could have implications on what we are expecting over the next several days. So if we take a look here at the East Pacific Basin, we notice that we have two systems here, Invest Area 92E and what could be Invest Area 93E. So both of these systems are kind of lined up. 92E could get pretty close here to portions of Mexico. And we also have this system back here, not yet designated, but could become Invest Area 93E and move off towards the Northwest as well. And in the Atlantic side, we have a newly, uh, in, kind of a newly formed area of interest here. This uh, is an area of interest with a 20% chance of developing over the next five days as it moves off towards kind of the northwest here. And we'll be watching for additional development with that as it closes in on the Yucatan Peninsula. So if we take a look here at Invest Area 92E. We can see that it's got a fairly robust area of shower and thunderstorm activity right now. This is kind of the area we're looking at. This is all moving off towards kind of the north northwest like this. And again, this could get pretty close to portions of Mexico here over the next several days and could become somewhat of a land concern. If we look here at the GFS forecast, this is the 850 millibar vorticity. So the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And what we notice here on the GFS is that we get a very robust storm to develop within about 60 hours or so. So this is by about 8 p.m. on Tuesday. And we also have a developing storm here and a developing storm out in the Atlantic. And we'll talk about this Atlantic storm here in a moment. But this uh, system here in the East Pacific, this lead system, could get pretty close here to land. Now, on the GFS forecast, at least on the latest, this is still about 200 miles away. So it is further away here because there is a little bit of a stronger ridge of high pressure that is sitting out here over the desert southwest. And what that will really do is continue to force this off generally towards the west. And we notice here in the upper level environment, there's a pretty favorable upper level environment, but there will be some shear. You notice that an anti-cyclone is located over Mexico and that will be imparting a little bit of shear over top of this. So maybe not the most favorable environment for this to rapidly intensify and pose a significant concern. The European forecast, if we go back to the zero Z run, uh, kind of similar, though it does bring this a little bit closer to Mexico because it is a little bit weaker. So it wants to drift a little bit further north because it's in that low level flow. So we'll have to monitor that very closely. Now, looking at the GFS forecast for the Atlantic Basin, we also have the potential for a new tropical system to be forming over here. Now, this is the GFS by about 2 a.m. on Thursday. And what we notice here is that we have a small but robust cyclone over portions of the far southern and western Caribbean. Now, we thought that this might be a ghost system. We thought that this might not be a very reliable uh, run here on the GFS. However, we noticed that in the 200 uh, millibar environment, so this is up at you know about 39,000 feet, the upper level wind pattern isn't all that unfavorable. There actually is some anticyclonic flow aloft. 
So divergence aloft, which leads to convergence at the surface and rising air at the surface. So there is actually the potential that this could become a storm, uh, which is indicated on the GFS. Now, the European solution here, the 6Z run of the euro, not really so favorable. The 0Z run of the model here, again, tried to spin up a brief system. And you can kind of see there is a little bit of vorticity here but it just kind of gets squashed into Central America because there's a big ridge of high pressure out here. Now, the ensembles here on the GFS ensembles, we actually noticed that all of this red here, this is a clustering of where a potential storm could be. And there does seem to be some indication that a storm could be in this region over the next several days. This is actually by about, uh, two, uh, about 8 p.m. here on Wednesday. And on the GFS here, there is actually a fairly good clustering uh, on the 12Z run of potential areas of low pressure or storms here in that area. Now to follow here, the European ensembles, curiously enough, are still picking up on that. And there actually is an area here by Thursday morning uh, that is down there in the far southern Caribbean closer to Panama. And then you start to notice that signal increasing in the kind of medium range here by Saturday of next week, you know, we're dealing with a potential storm down in that vicinity. So bottom line is there will be the potential for at least some activity over the next several days. And we'll talk about more of this here in tomorrow's video, but I'm really not too concerned about this, but I could definitely see a storm closing in on the Yucatan Peninsula or portions of Central America within the next four to five days. So we'll have to keep a very close eye on that. Now, taking a look here down the road for what to expect for the upcoming hurricane season, we noticed that this is the CFS, the climate forecast system, and we're looking at the 200 millibar zonal wind anomalies. So basically, we're looking at everything here in kind of the purple. This is basically all easterly wind, and in the orange, kind of the oranges, red colors, this is basically westerly wind. Now, we notice that if we go out to the peak of the hurricane season, we actually have, this is valid for August, we actually have wind that is generally more easternly across this entire area. And now, easterly wind, generally speaking, in the low levels, mixes up the, the, the waters, but in the upper levels, it leads to reduced vertical shear because if you have westerly wind here, as storms are trying to go west, it just runs into that shear and you don't get a storm to develop. But we have anomalous easterly winds here, which leads me to believe that the vertical shear will be a lot lower. And by September, we have anomalous, significant anomalous easterly winds, allowing for potentially a wide open tropical Atlantic and more storms to be, you know, forcing, you know, its way through any obstacle here. And the environment within the sea surface temperatures for August, September, and October look pretty favorable. Again, you kind of have this mix between a phase one AMO and a phase two AMO. Now, the difference, again, basically it, it, with a phase two is that the warmth is, instead of it being focused down here, it's just translated northward. And with a phase one, it's translated south. But it's kind of a mixture between the both of them, it seems like there. Now... Looking here at a different map, this is kind of a different, you know, subset of, of how do you, you know, classify anomalies. But the sea surface temperature anomalies off the OSET version here does show, I mean, a pretty warm main development region at this point. There's only a few areas that are at or maybe slightly below average. But I mean, generally, for the most part, this area is warm and the trends on this have been increasingly one you can kind of see that we are in a downward trend through april and that was because we had very significant uh, easterly winds in the low levels but over time that has definitely kind of trended upwards and right now we're kind of sitting at about uh, 0.35 degrees celsius above the long-term average and what this will continue to do i mean even in the face of easterly winds that we've had over the last several weeks this has actually warmed slightly so it seems like we're on the warming trend in the tropical Atlantic, and I do suspect that will continue to increase as we progress over the next several of weeks, as trade winds will be generally lighter than average, leading to more anomalous warming. 
And just another thing here to point out, this is the upper ocean heat content, the tropical cyclone heat potential. And basically anywhere within these lighter greens here all the way up to the reds, that's high upper ocean heat content. And I wanted to point this out because this really matters for the upcoming uh, hurricane season, but also matters for this tropical system in the Caribbean right now. We noticed that where most of our upper ocean heat content is, it's residing out here kind of in the Caribbean and then that warm eddy in the Gulf of Mexico. And this definitely has me a little bit concerned because if we get anything to come through here, we definitely could have something that tries to intensify if the shear is, you know, in, in correct uh, alignment there. But this area definitely has been notorious for rapidly intensifying hurricanes over the last several decades because of that warm water that's just stockpiled in this region. And even the tropical Atlantic, for that matter, you notice kind of the delineation of the more robust upper ocean heat content values. They are starting to, to get up here. I mean, this is now, you know, about nine Celsius is, or nine, you know, degrees here is right about here. And so 12 north is right here. And that's getting up there. So some of these low latitude <clears throat> tropical waves that come off later in the season or, you know, even earlier may have a shot at developing there. So we'll have to watch that, but it seems like we could be experiencing a very busy season and one that definitely favors United States landfalls and a Caribbean threat as well. All right. With well, that being said, I hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael O'Malley. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.